be part of history. So I'm going to start off and tell you a little bit about me and how we got to where we are today. Beth, I am also the parent of a 31-year-old high-functioning autistic adult. And back in 2010, I was driving him to a program called the Peers Program at UCLA that was teaching social skills. And one of the things they wanted was for him to participate in more and more clubs. And the club that I thought of at that point while I was driving was Toastmasters. And what a perfect fit Toastmasters would be for people on the autism spectrum. Not only does it focus on communication skills, but it also helps with social skills and it's an extremely supportive environment. So that started me on a journey. That summer I did, uh, actually it took two years, but in 2012 I did a speech craft. And then after the speech craft, because it was so successful, I started a gavel club for young adults uh, with autism and found a remarkable um, success. I'm gonna share for a moment a video about the success that we saw at this gavel club. As far as the gavel club, uh, that has just been an amazing uh, springboard for him to develop socially. Um, he, watching his progress and all of the people involved in gavel club to see their progress from when we started a couple years ago until now, um, they've just blossomed with their confidence and speaking skills. And I think most importantly, their social skills. They've developed friendships. We all have. Yeah. As a recent college graduate seeking a full-time job, I have great interest about the impact of COVID on the job market and the future of work. From what we can observe so far, the pandemic has affected in-person services and high digital skills in very different ways. Well, it's helped me develop more self-confidence and social skills. Learn how to prepare and structure speeches and evaluations and improve communication skills. At that point, because things turned out so sour, I could have decided I would have hated the world and had more bitterness towards the world. But I decided, I, I realized I had a choice at some point and decided I didn't want to live like that. In one of my last speeches, I was talking about the death of Superman. And I mentioned Batman in that speech. In this speech, however, I'm not going to be talking about the Dark Knight himself. I'm going to be talking about one of his main villains. But it's not going to be the Joker, the Penguin, the Riddler, Scarecrow, Two-Face, Rhea Ghoul, or Catwoman. You see right here, it's going to be this man, Bane. You know, certainly the gavel club, um, you know, is really helpful in, um, you know, improving Kenny's communication skills, uh, learning how meetings are structured. You know, he's pretty introverted. So just having a group, a community, I think is really important for us um, both. Lastly, even though we love to scare ourselves, Mankind's greatest fear is the unknown, for the fear of the unknown is one of the most natural and presumptive fears that we have. This is because people love the world to make sense by having things wrapped up in nice, neat little packages because our world is easier to engage in when things make sense. 
kill some Meiji to further engage with the unknown in order to make better sense of the world. Um, ever since joining Gava Club, I got a, a little bit better at speaking in public and creating my speeches. When I first started Gava Club, I would speak um, fast and people couldn't understand my words. I'm getting better right now. I'm not speaking more slowly and clearly, though sometimes I will slur my words and speak too fast. But other times I do speak slowly and clearly enough so people can understand me and I'm getting better at organizing my speeches because of the topics into the proper and getting better at practicing my speeches and not reading directly from my note cards and directly looking at the camera. And I'm also glad I'm able to make um, some more friends beyond my co-workers at work and I think it's really healthy. Perfect. Thank you, Lauren. how impactful the gavel club has been to these individuals and it's been impactful to me too and on my journey I met lots of interesting people and one of the people I met was Sasha Zydek. Sasha and I got together for a meeting where I was talking to her about the Orange County Asperger support group and all the different things we did and she was struck by our Toastmasters group. This led her on a journey, which I'll let her share in the next set of slides. Thank you. I was introduced to Judy through a colleague at work, and uh, my colleague knew that I uh, was interested in working with adults, and so she introduced me to Judy because Judy's the president of the Orange County Asperger Sport Group, which is focused on adolescents and adults. And Judy talked to me because she has lots going on. And Judy wanted me to research something else going on with her group. But when she's telling me about all the things going on at the Orange County Asperger Support Group, and she mentions um, this public speaking club, I think to myself, really a public speaking club for autistic people? That sounds really interesting. I have to see this because, you know, as an autism researcher, I've never seen anything like that before. So she invited me to one of the meetings, and I was absolutely blown away by the the speeches, first of all, but also just the sense of community and how inviting and open it was and how um, comfortable the, the members of the club were. And so I invited my colleague, Yaz, who's here with us too today. Um, I said, you have to see this, it's so amazing. I feel like there's something here. Um, and so I introduced her to Judy and she visited a, cl a club meeting and so, but after both of us, you know, went to one meeting, we both were sold. Toastmasters is a great program for people with autism, but nobody has ever studied this before. So we got to talk in with Judy and we said, we know we want to research this. We want to know, you know, I mean, we, we know from anecdotally and from meeting Toastmasters um, on the spectrum, but, <clears throat> you know, we want to know with data. So we wrote a grant to the Organization for Autism Research. Um, and the purpose of our study is to investigate the impact of Toastmasters on, um, for people on the spectrum. Um, so the approach that we're taking is a little bit different than many researchers take. Um, it's called a community-based participatory method. And what that means is that we have autistic people involved in the process of the research that we're doing. So we have a set of four autistic um, Toastmasters, one caregiver from the Gavel Club, and Judy, who we meet with regularly to talk about things like, you know, the measurements that we're using, um, you know, the, the study aims, the results that we're seeing, to clarify things that we're seeing, and things like that. Um, so that's, you know, we like to involve those autistic adults as participants and partners in our study. And our overall goal is to help promote social communication skills and self-efficacy in a supportive environment and also to help develop those skills 
as you know, as Toastmasters in listening, giving feedback, leadership, and mentoring. Uh, next slide, please. So our process unfolded in, we have two separate aims and we have four steps in the process here. So the aims are in those blue boxes. The first aim is to obtain a compre comprehensive understanding of whether, for whom, and under what circumstances Toastmasters is a meaningful community-based program for autistic participants. And to do this, we first observed the Orange County Asperger Support Group Alvo Club meetings for about nine months. Um, and sometime about halfway through the nine month period, we started doing interviews with um, the members of the OCASG Gavel Club, as well as other autistic Toastmasters who we met. Um, and it, it, along the road somewhere, we also met Jenny. So that's how we got connected to this club. When we started observing, there was no uh, Toastmasters Club specifically for neurodivergent people. And now look at how far we've come in such a short amount of time. Jenny has done amazing things. Um, so after we completed those first two steps in the research process, we analyzed those interviews and our observational data, and we came up with some adaptations based on you know, what we learned through the process. And what we learned you know, in a second, you'll, you'll get some of those results, um, but some very positive things. So the next phase of the study is to make adaptations to the speech craft and evaluate the effectiveness of speech craft for autistic people. So um, that's where we're at now. We're getting to that last step in that four-step process here on this slide. Um, so I'm going to give the mic over to, I think Yaz is the next slide here, and she's going to talk a little bit about what we found in the first two steps of our study, and then we will talk about where we're at now and how you can get involved. To autistic adults who are either currently attending or have previously attended Toastmasters, and our goal was to learn from their experiences and understand how this program can be helpful for young adults on the autism spectrum. So what we, so what did we learn from these interviews? We discovered a few important things about the program. First of all, these adults mentioned some specific benefits that they gained from participating. These included getting better at communicating, becoming more skilled in leadership, gaining confidence, and feeling like they belong to a community. Um, but that's not all. They also found some unexpected advantages, like making new friends, learning practical skills for everyday life, and even seeing improvements in their mental health. Uh, next slide, please. I wanted to share a couple examples of what people said in these interviews. So one person shared that the greatest benefit, which isn't talked about enough in their opinion, is feeling confident when speaking and getting a message across. Toastmasters help them feel more assured in their ability to communicate effectively. And this newfound confidence in speaking up and expressing themselves was a big advantage. Another person um, mentioned how much they loved the community at Toastmasters. They said, everyone gets their chance to shine. I just love the community there. It's just a healthy community. So people feel supported and encouraged. They um, have opportunities to showcase their skills and talk about their interests and people feel included and valued. These findings show that Toastmasters has the power to really transform communication skills and boost confidence. It also provides a friendly and inclusive environment where individuals can grow and thrive. Next slide, please. A few more examples are on this slide. Um, one participant emphasized the importance of being able to convey a complete message clearly, concisely, and effectively. They mentioned learning how to be organized while expressing themselves, serving as their own advocate, and acting as a liaison for various matters. Essentially, Toastmasters helped them develop skills that enabled them to speak up for themselves and effectively represent their interests and their needs. Another interviewee shared their favorite aspect of Toastmasters, which is the opportunity to see other individuals flourish. They emphasize the joy that they experience from being a part of a social circle within the Toastmasters community. Uh, building connections and forming relationships with others was a significant source of satisfaction and fulfillment for them. These interviews shed light on the valuable skills gained through Toastmasters, such as effective communication, self-advocacy, and the enjoyment of supportive, uh, supportive social community. Uh, Toastmasters not only equips individuals with practical abilities, but also fosters meaningful connections and a sense of belonging. So those are some of the benefits that, that we learned from 
the interviews that we've done with current and previous members so far. Uh, next slide, please. And so what's next for us? Well, we're excited to share that we'll be hosting two new Toastmasters groups. These groups will use a, a special version of the program called Speechcraft. One group will happen in the summer and one will take place in the fall. Both will be held online through Zoom. Uh, next slide, please. If you know of anyone who might be interesting, interested in joining as an autistic participant, we would love to hear from them. Keep in mind that these groups are part of a research study, so there are a few criteria. First participants should be between 13, 18 and 34 years uh, old. Uh, they should have a high school diploma, have an autism diagnosis, speak English fluently, and be new to Toastmasters. So if they've already been in Toastmasters before, they won't be able to join these specific groups. Hopefully in the future, we'll run more of these and we'll be able to include others. Uh, as part of the study, we'll ask participants to fill out some surveys and to thank them for their time, they'll receive a $100 gift card. Next slide, please. There is also an opportunity for experienced Toastmasters to get involved as mentors. So hopefully this is where you all come in. If you are currently at level two or a competent communicator, we would love to have your support and guide autistic individuals in our upcoming groups. Being a mentor will provide valuable experience, uh, especially if you have a passion for helping autistic adults reach their full potential. As a mentor, you'll receive training on uh, best practices for mentoring and understanding neurodiversity. Your role will be to support your assigned mentee through the program. Um, and we truly appreciate um, our mentor's time and commitment. So uh, as a token of our gratitude, particularly for um, also completing a uh, few surveys as well, they'll receive $45 for each mentee uh, they support with a total of $90. Uh, so if you're interested and wanna get involved or if you have any questions at all, please email us at szdike at fullerton.edu. I believe it's on the next slide, that email address. We're really excited about these new Toastmasters groups and can't wait to have you be a part of them. Oh, that's right. There's also uh, a little pitch that if you um, are interested in giving um, an educational speech, speech there's also room uh, for people to, to sign up for that role. So again, if you're interested and have any questions um, about being involved or the study, please email us at scdike at fullerton.edu. There are also uh, interest forms that we have that you can easily complete. Uh, we just ask for your name and contact information and we will reach out to you to answer any questions. So I will drop those links in just a moment. But thank you for your time in this presentation. We hope that you feel inspired to reach out to us and connect with us soon.